All right, so in this problem, we're told a 1.25 kilogram mass stretches a vertical spring 0.215 meters. If the spring is stretched an additional 0 0.130 meters and released, how long does it take to reach the new equilibrium position again? So uh, let's first understand what we have going on here. So we can imagine we have this vertical spring with this mass attached. And we know the mass, you can imagine the spring is just hanging from the ceiling or something, and it's going to be pulling it down due to its weight, right? So there's going to be the force mg pulling it down, right, and going to be stretching it. And we know uh, it's going to stretch it 0.215 meters. Uh, and then what we're going to do is stretch the spring an additional 0 0.130 meters, release it, and then we want to find out how much time it takes to reach uh, the equilibrium position again, right, which is where it is at now. Uh, so we're given the mass of the block. And uh, yeah, so let's talk about how we're going to solve for this. Or right, so the first thing we need to do is find the spring constant k. So we know by Hooke's law, the force equals the spring constant times x, which is the displacement. So the first thing we have to do is solve for k uh, because we're gonna be using it in the rest of the problem. So I know k equals, if I divide both sides by x, essentially equals the force over the displacement. So I know the force that's gonna be pulling down on it is equal to mg, right? The force due to gravity uh, is pulling it down and stretching the spring. So the force is just mg divided by x. So we know that, uh, but let's talk about, or let's just um, plug in our stuff. So we know what the mass is, right? They tell us that value. The mass is equal to 1.25, right? So 1.25, that's the mass in kilograms, times the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8, over the displacement. So uh, we know the displacement when we apply this force is 0.215 meters. So 0.215. Let me plug this in. 1.25 times 9.8 divided by 0.215. That'll give us a k value equal to 56.977, we'll say. 56.977. The units are going to be newtons per meter, right? Because this is force, which is newtons, and then meters here. So we have the k value now in newtons per meter. And so uh, we've got that, and the way we're going to solve for this is by using this formula here for the period of something traveling in a uh, simple harmonic motion like this, right? We know the sp uh, spring is going to travel that way. So the formula for the period is 2 pi over the square root of the mass divided by the spring constant k. And so the trick to this problem is knowing that a mass that's oscillating like this is going to move from its equilibrium to its maximum displacement at a time equal to the period divided by 4. And so what we can do is use this equation. If we divide this value by 4, right, if we can figure out what the period is and divide it by 4, that's going to go ahead and give us our answer, right? Because that's going to be the amount of time, right? Because if you imagine it, let me show you like this. So if we have a graph here and I graph the motion of it oscillating, let's say it's just, actually, that's pretty bad drawing. Let me, okay, kind of like this. So uh, we know that the peak is going to occur at pi over 2, where this is pi, this is 3 pi over 2, and then th this is 2 pi, right? So it's going to oscillate like this, okay? And we know at one-fourth the time is going to be how long uh, it takes it go to its peak, right? Because this whole time is the period, right? How long it takes to go from here to here is the period. So if we do one-fourth of that, my drawing isn't accurate. The peak should be right here, like this. Uh, but essentially, we know it occurs at one-fourth the time. So if we divide this by four, right, the how long it takes it to return from its outstretched point to equilibrium is uh, one-fourth the period, right? Because right? this is a fourth, this is a fourth, uh, and then it would be like this is a fourth, and this is a fourth. So that's why we're dividing it by four, right, to get the time it takes to return back to this. Right, because if we just divide the period by that, that's how we get our answer. So hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and it's really just a matter of plugging in the value now. So 2 pi divided by the mass, which was 1.25. Uh, and then you would divide by k, uh, right, which is 56.977. And as I said before, we're dividing this value by 4. So we got to divide it by 4 like this. I probably should have wrote it here, right? So we're, our answer is basically just the period divided by 4. So that's why we're dividing by 4 here. So let's go ahead and plug it in now. So 2 times pi 
multiplied by the square root of 1.25 divided by 56.977. Uh, and then you divide this thing by 4. So what you get is 0.23266. So it's 0.233. So 0.233. Uh, obviously, we're dealing with a period, so we're in seconds here. But yeah, so uh, what they're asking is how long does it take to reach the new equilibrium position again? So from its outstretched point to back to the equilibrium is one-fourth the period, which is 0.233 seconds. Uh, but yeah, so just a quick rundown. We solve for the force here to get, or we solve for the spring constant K, so we could plug it in this equation, and then we just knew... Uh, it takes one fourth the period to return to equilibrium. So we just divided the period by four. Uh, and yeah, so this right here is going to be your answer. And uh, hopefully you found this video useful.